Welcome to the cow's opinion, where we give an opinion from a cow. It's kind of in the title. And today we are talking about how much it costs to make a triple A game. Now, I've been trying to do less bad stories. By that I mean like Blizzard harasses its employees. Uh, stuff was stolen. And I mean, that's news, but it's not always fun. So I've been trying to find more positive news, but also more interesting news. It's not necessarily negative. This is slightly negative, but today I want to talk about this article that appeared on Kotaku. That the AAA game development is just huge. Now, as we know, the UK Competition and Markets Authority voted to block Microsoft's merger with Activision Blizzard, and it is being appealed. But one of the interesting things that have come out of this is the reasoning why the CMA appealed. And everybody has been giving, you know, testimony, opinions. And one of the biggest things that people have taken away is that those AAA games we all love are costing a lot more money to make. And like a stupid amount of money to make. In fact, one publisher has said that they expect to spend over a have spent a billion dollars on a recent release. Now, of course, Call of Duty and uh, Grand Theft Auto are huge, huge, huge games. And we understand that they have huge budgets. Grand Theft Auto alone, God, I don't even want to know how much they spend just on the rights to all the music when you're driving around listening to the radio. It's probably more than most than a lot of game budgets. But in their recent decision, the CMA gave a 418-page report giving reasoning, and part of the reasoning was the ever-increasing rise of game development. Now, there was a research firm that pushed a report called IDG that said last generation, Blockbuster or AAA, those really big first-party games, or like Activision, Blizzard, or Ubisoft, you know, the really big games that sell huge, if they're made correctly. Last generation, PS4 and Xbox 360, the, or well, Xbox One, whatever they're on, Xbox numbering is weird, that they were about 50 to 150 million. That's a pretty big range. But... They're saying that in the next couple of years, they would expect it to be at least $200 million. And if you think that doesn't sound bad, they were also saying that back in 2024, a decade ago, it was closer to 60 at the top end. Now, that's not great. If your costs triple in a decade, that's huge. Nothing, Even with inflation running rampant here in America... You know, we're not talking about th the cost of things tripling in 10 years. The CMA also wrote that uh, also the report says that some AAA franchises like Call of Duty have development budgets already exceeding $300 million. And the next Grand Theft Auto and other future tentpoles are also expected to hit at least a quarter of a billion dollars or higher. Activision is also quoted in the report as saying, with reference to Call of Duty, we have to make so much content for Call of Duty that we can't even lean on one lead studio anymore. Now we need almost one and a half lead studios for each annual Call of Duty. That kind of bandwidth pressure is forcing us to use outsourcers more and more. I don't see that changing anytime soon. They also had uh, publishers give examples, and the publishers, you know got to do this anonymously because you don't want to say how much you give but these ranges are not great either one publisher says that it spends a hundred and sixty four million dollars on pre-launch developing the game and then another fifty five million on marketing publisher number two says that their game budgets go between eighty and three hundred and fifty million but marketing can be up to three hundred and ten million dollars for the big the marketing is almost as big as the game a third publisher said the costs were between 110 and 350 million as well for the recent releases. They this third publisher did not give a breakdown between actually making the game and actually uh, marketing the game. But publisher number four 
said that their budgets range between 90 and 180 million, and marketing is 50 to 150 million, and that its most expensive game cost them 660 million dollars to develop, with another 550 million dollars to market the game. You guys know that you can just set up a Twitter page and a YouTube account and be done with it, right? You get that, right? If I'm making a $660 million game, people already know what I'm making. I don't think I need to spend a half a billion dollars to market it. What are you talking about? Now, the CMA has been using this to justify not allowing the merger between Activision and Microsoft to go forward because they say that these costs make it unlikely that there's going to be a replacement for Call of Duty anytime soon. But, you know, we've been... the Kotaku is pointing out here that stuff like Suicide Squad and Starfield have cost tons of money, take years to make, and then take forever to come out. And that it's causing developers to rethink how risky they want to be. Recently, we've had Ubisoft doubling down on Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, and PlayStation fans are saying that Sony isn't releasing a lot of new IPs like they usually used to. They're just a little worried about how much money they're spending. It's easy on, like, Halo or Mario to justify a couple hundred million dollars in developing the game and then a marketing budget that is half to almost as much. These are known franchises with built-in fan bases. They're going to do pretty well, and if you make them fantastic like you can, like you should... They're going to sell great. But some new shooter that you want to replace Call of Duty? No, 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 no. You can't spend $300 million on an unknown franchise like that. There's no... You, you probably have to spend at least 450 on the marketing to make sure it gets out there enough. So I can kind of see why PlayStation's a little worried. In fact, Shane Layden, who is the former chairman of Sony Interactive Worldwide Studios, said back in 22... I don't think in the next generation you can take those numbers and multiply them by two and expect the industry to continue to grow, he said at the time of the budgets. Now, game companies are trying, but the cow's opinion is this. This helps make it a little more understood why PlayStation and Sony are so against Call of Duty being owned by anybody. Because you need either a lot of money or at least a decade to make a new shooter franchise that can stand with them. If Call of Duty, let's say, gets bought by Microsoft and Sony's like, oh god, we need our new shooter for ourselves, they're going to spend at least $300 million in development cost. That's assuming that they don't have to set up a new studio to do it, which will push the development costs way higher. Then, again, like I said... I guarantee you need at least 300 if not $450 million on marketing because you need to get that out there for people. That is the money route. You could also take the time route and start a new franchise and it maybe it's got a more moderate 30 to $50 million budget, but it's really tight. It's got great replayability. And then, you know, as it builds its legacy and its stature, you put more money in and maybe... Over the course of the 10 years that Microsoft is guaranteeing you that you will have Call of Duty, you just build it up to where when Call of Duty goes, you're like, that's okay, because here's all Call of Duty. But that's time. The problem with the money is that you can sink close to a billion dollars and not be any closer to having a Call of Duty. And a billion dollars is a lot of cheddar. The problem with the time is that it takes time. You could start building that franchise, then five, six, seven years into it, realize, oh, shoot. This franchise stands well on its own, but it's not going to be a replacement for Call of Duty. It's just not, it, it's not standing up there. And then you realize, oh, no, I've only got four or five more years of Call of Duty guaranteed. And then Microsoft might start playing hardball, and uh, I've got to... How I gotta get another franchise now to replace Call of Duty Replacement 1, which didn't work out. It Again, it could be a good franchise. Maybe it sells a couple hundred million dollars in revenue, but you want Call of Duty. 
Daddy wants the billions. So this is just uh, many, many interesting things have been coming out over Microsoft's attempted acquisition of Activision. And this is one of this huge look into game development. I mean, this alone, even without knowing these publishers, somebody with a lot of knowledge in the industry can probably tell you what this most expensive game on Publisher 4 is. Because, you know, they're going to know what game cost about $700 million, had a half a billion dollar marketing. They're going to know. So if you know, you know who these publishers are. But just all this information, this is information we used to never get. Now, it's coming out of the woodwork as Microsoft and Sony keep fighting. Microsoft's not going to go away quietly, you guys. And the worst thing that could come out of this isn't that Microsoft buys Activision. The worst thing that could come out of it is Microsoft buys Activision and then says, but we won't release any of those products in the UK because they don't want it. They, they're they not allowing us to own it there. And the UK economy is not super great right now. So a major international corporation that helps a ton of other businesses within the UK pulling back or even just holding firm on investments and not investing any more money there. Uh, you're going to have a lot of uh, UK residents getting real mad real fast. But let me know what you think. Are you surprised by the fact that it looks like it's going to be $200 million minimum to play in the AAA gaming pool in a couple of years? Did you even know it tripled in the last decade? Do you think that these marketing budgets are really stupid considering that, again, you can just set up a YouTube channel for the game and a Twitter and an Instagram and make some videos and be done with it? I mean, some of these... I've, I've seen really huge budgets for marketing sometimes, but every once in a while I get you get told how much marketing is being done and you're like, where'd the money go? Because I didn't see any of that. Let me know what you think. Uh, more content coming always. Guys, and play more games. Games are awesome, and you deserve the awesome. I'll see you next time.